My name is Taylor Seijin, and I'm an artist and craftswoman currently working with porcelain to create richly decorated functional pottery at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. I grew up in a small American family in coastal Ohio. Being raised as an American without a strong sense of familial or cultural identity led me to investigate and participate in broader human traditions. I was searching for a more tangible sense of cultural connection. I began to study and became fascinated by medicinal herbology and the cross-cultural history of utilizing plants as medicine. As I researched and learned about plants, a meaningful relationship with nature creating physical and emotional nourishment, and connecting with people became fundamentally important to me. I have that same sense of connection when I work with clay to design and make pottery for others, centered around joyous visual and functional experience. I choose to make useful objects out of the desire to connect my reverence for plants, nourishment, and beauty with others who then add their own meanings and interpretations to my work after it becomes a part of their life. A central exploration in my work is the potential of beauty in creating a compelling object. However, utility is also in constant focus as I design my work within the parameters dictated by its function. These two concepts, aesthetic beauty and utilitarian function are both important and I constantly make decisions to balance them throughout my process. Beyond functioning as a beautiful aesthetic object, my pottery has the added experiential purpose of containing, offering, and dispensing nourishment. My vessels are a bridge between user and maker and I strive to form connections between people and pots by exploring the complexities in intriguing surface and form. I am interested in the various ways that I can design vessels to guide sensual experiences, focusing not only on appearance, but also on the impact of my work on other senses, such as the subtleties and balance as it is held the sound it makes as it is poured from or into, or when it is set down, the way that light catches the surface, and the impact of form on the temperature of its contents. Because of their ability to inform the experiences around preparing, displaying, serving, sharing, and consuming food and drink, they are not simply decorative. They are meant to be experienced through the act of use. While it is ultimately up to the collector what that use is, I consider them unfulfilled unless they are functioning beyond that of a decorative object. However, for many people, decoration is a signifier to not touch. It implies preciousness and value and can be intimidating. I make pots that attempt to get people to overcome this initial reaction. To encourage touch, I make altered forms and decorate them with asymmetrical surfaces. My process for constructing vessels combines throwing, altering, and hand building to build soft forms that are the basis for dynamic surface design. I want the complexity of their construction to inspire curiosity about how it was crafted and beckon a person in closer to investigate. The compositions on each pot feature abstracted plants in service to creating movement around the piece by weaving painted, slip-trailed, and stamped motifs around the surface. My method for layering painted underglaze involves collage with laser-cut paper resists and additional hand-painted details. The resists are cut from digitally manipulated silhouettes of real plants, either pressings or photographs. This allows me to employ specific plants symbolically on my work, 
while freeing me to not have to worry about the accuracy of their depiction as I layer them intuitively across the pottery forms. I balance quieter spaces for contemplation with abundant areas of celebratory color to create harmony. A collector has the option to choose which side they wish to display prominently or share through their own photographed images. Layers of mark making techniques serve to bring the user's wandering attention back to the piece through a juxtaposition of different textures. Tactile and visual complexity is further explored through materiality and glaze phenomena to encourage a person's eyes and hands to move around the form, into the interior, and underneath. By understanding work physically through multiple senses, its potential as an experiential object is better understood. When the pandemic suddenly forced me out of my consuming studio practice, I spent months at home performing domestic rituals, cooking, washing dishes, and gardening without the interruptions of school or work. It was because of this time that I was able to identify, again, what is most important to me, a meaningful relationship with nature, creating physical and emotional nourishment, and connecting with people. Emotional nourishment can happen when sharing experiences with family and friends, and often these experiences are centered around or at least include a meal or a drink. It is through those intimate moments with others that our lives are enriched and we find meaning. The COVID-19 pandemic has made it unwise to share much of anything in close proximity with others. I have felt a pervasive sense of loss because of this, a sort of vague and constant desire for something other than this new reality. As our realities shift, the objects around us appear to remain the same, but with time they accrue deeper meaning and trigger memories of people or events that are deeply personal and sentimental. In the absence of new experiences with others, those sentimental objects become all the more precious as mementos from those times. It is this potential for emotional connection through beauty and preciousness that I find most fascinating to explore as I am creating my work. For my thesis, I am making a range of functional pottery that reflects on my experiences during the pandemic. Part of my focus are celebratory sets displayed on pedestals. They are expressive of both my bittersweet nostalgia and hope for the future. For moments spent with friends and family around the table, pouring wine or brewing coffee, having conversations centered around the experience of using domestic objects. I am also making pots for preparing and cooking food displayed on shelves as well as an intimate breakfast setting for two, displayed on a handmade table to evoke a sense of home amongst a collection of meaningful objects. My pottery, decorated as it may be, is meant to live in the domestic spaces of living rooms, dining rooms, and kitchens. They are intended to participate in both celebratory gatherings and solitary moments, and hold the potential for generating connections with others.